Welcome to Optimal Play. I am Brandon. I'm Steven. And we are here tonight to review the player cards in the Return to the Forgotten Age box, which uh, feels like we just got home from FarkhamCon, a long trip back uh, from the Arkham Horror online convention last weekend. Last weekend? Was it just one week ago? I yes, guess. it was. Wow. Yeah, I mean, time <laughs> is circular, you know? Like, it's, it, it has no meaning. <laughs> it has no meaning. Um, yeah, if you've uh, if you've been a little bit under a rock when it comes to the Arkham Horror uh, community comings and goings, the Mythos Busters podcast put on a great online convention that we got to participate in. Uh, we reviewed the campaign of the Forgotten Age in anticipation of this box coming out, doing a two-plus-hour deep dive talk through that campaign. Uh, so if you want to hear me get a little salty, <laughs> talk about some of the pros and cons of that campaign, um, that's up on our YouTube channel now. We played this amazing uh, chaos-ish game we called the Ultimatum of Crowdsourced Chaos, where we let 30 different people each build our decks one card at a time and had to play with those. Uh, that was a blast. How did, how did you think that went? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I think the highlight was maybe someone submitted Marvel cards. And we, tr <laughs> we tried to interpret them in the Arkham rule set as best as we could. Um, and I, I had one that was uh, super OP in Arkham called Magic Blast. Yeah. Both, turn both killed an enemy and discarded my weakness uh, for $3. So, turns know. out... Uh, um... Uh, event that costs three resources and just does five damage is a little strong in Arkham. <laughs> Makes sense in Marvel, I guess. I haven't actually played. I think that's a Doctor Strange card. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, um, you know, <laughs> Doctor Strange and Mystic, like, I, I, it seems legal. I would say. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was it, a good put it, in, put it in all your Mystic decks, like. Yeah. Yeah, our, our uh, trollish friend who contributed those cards actually put a little bit of thought into, like, what cards make sense in what decks, despite them being from the wrong game. So that that was a huge highlight. Um, I also, on Sunday, streamed uh, Labyrinth of Lunacy uh, with some, some great guys and uh, played a full three tables of that. That is not up on YouTube because the thing with digital Labyrinth of Lunacy is it ha has, like, all the waiting for other tables without all the like camaraderie and fun <laughs> of playing a multi-table epic game so uh i thought that the video of that came out a little uh a little slow and so if you check out twitch.tv slash optimal play that's where we streamed it and that's saved on in the archives there for a little while longer i think about three weeks from the date of this uh, video um but yeah that was a blast uh i just want to thank you uh everyone who chatted in our streams, watched our uh, our shows at FarkhamCon, played with us if you played with us, um, and then also just the uh, awesome people at Mythos Busters and everyone else involved in making it a great show. It was awesome. Um, did you see anything else you liked? I didn't get much chance to watch other people's uh, content, unfortunately. Yeah, it was it was a packed weekend, so I, it was also the restart of the NBA season, uh, and I am a basketball mm -hmm. fan. And it was Netrunner North American Championships. Uh, which oh, yeah. I played like eight hours of Netrunner on Saturday. Okay. Um, right. Online? Uh, yeah, online. Hmm. Uh, came in 24th, so not bad. Got some prizes. Oh, wow. Out of how? Um, out of, wait. Like 140. Of... Oh, okay. 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 So, that sounds great. Yeah. Nice job. Um, and I was undefeated with my corp, but not so good with my runner. Um, oh, okay. But I did, I did catch a couple of Farcoms, so uh, I caught a little bit of Drawn to the Flame, uh, and I saw that they gave us a shout-out, so thanks, oh, thanks Drawn awesome. to the Flame for promoting uh, the Ultimatum of uh, Chaos. Um, and then I saw, Great podcast, Drawn to the Flame. <laughs> I saw some of the trivia with Matt Newman, uh, and that was pretty fun. Oh, yeah, um, that was. I saw some of that, too. If you can find the, like, uh, the actual quiz that they're giving out, which was like a link posted in Discord, um, it's mm -hmm. kind of more fun to like try to guess it yourself and then hear you know matt newman give the answer um I think right it's right the, the most fun way to watch that um, yeah um i wonder if on the website on farcomcon.com i wonder if they also have a link to that form that would be a nice touch if they do yeah uh and then the, my favorite was actually uh scott from mythos busters and nate from uh great old ones gaming i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um did Italian dressing, which was Tony and Tommy with Italian accents uh, playing murder <laughs> Wait, at the Excelsior that's Hotel. All, so I heard multiple people raving about this, and I actually never learned what the hell Italian dressing was. <laughs> that's what it was? It was yeah, Tommy and Tony it. with Italian accents? <laughs> and like, 
every every time that they like attack someone, they're like, oh, "I'll give them the old Pittsburgh parlay." Like, there, that there's is, a lot of different euphemisms for fighting people. That is so much dumber and <laughs> awesomer than I even thought that could possibly be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll definitely check that out. That sounds like that sounds like a yeah. good time. <laughs> that one totally works as a recording. Like, you can watch it. It's on the Farkham site, and it's probably on YouTube as well. So. All right, all right, yeah. So uh, we'll link to, uh, one last time to the Farkham Con website too, so you can check out um, what the schedule was. Check out anything that sounded awesome. It's uh, it was a great time, and yeah. hopefully not the like. Uh, to me, it went so well that like even if Gen Con does go back to normal next year, which is like I don't know, maybe a coin flip chance at this point, but uh, even if it does, I hope that we do something like this whether it's annually or, or every so often because it was able to involve a lot of people who don't normally get to go out of you know take a week off travel to gen con and play arkham for five days straight uh well yeah yeah i mean even if we have gen con next year we're definitely gonna miss arkham nights this year so like yep i i don't know if people are gonna be up for like doing something in november but you know we could at least do an arkham nights replacement in february or something you know sure yeah yeah um, so yeah, I'm not sure uh, if those the uh, same Mythos Busters guys have another thing in mind. I know that they've hinted at it, but I don't know if it's a year from now or next week. <laughs> we'll let you know uh, when we find out because we'll be looking forward to it and hopefully participating in it again. Uh, but anyway, we are here because we have the return to forg oh, oh, the light is there. We go. Nope. There, return to forgotten age. <laughs> box in hand which promises to have i assume that all these player cards which i haven't looked at are all upgrades downgrades other versions of existing player cards is usually what the return boxes do and i think player cards from that boxes cycle um and the uh oh and then um at the end after we talk through these we uh, i've glanced at some of the campaign updates and compared them a little bit to some of our predictions from last week's video and uh i was pretty surprised by what's in here so we're gonna stay completely spoiler free on that until like the last five minutes of the video and then we'll touch on them then um since i'm excited to to point them out a little bit so uh with that shall i take us into guardian do it all right uh we are starting <laughs> starting with a real winner that uh we saw a lot of the level three version of this in <laughs> <laughs> in our crowdsource chaos game uh this is level one blood eclipse uh it is a one cost guardian event that says it's spell and spirit traded and it says as an additional cost to play blood eclipse take two damage fight this attack uses willpower instead of combat you get plus two willpower and deal plus two damage for this attack uh this card seems great in a vacuum can you remind us what the old one was yeah, so the old one let you choose how much damage to take. You could take up to three. Um, and it also had the will uh, instead of fight. But the old one actually only gave you plus one will. Um, and cost three oh. XP. Wait, um, it didn't give you plus one will per damage you took? No, it was only plus one will. It really? should have given you plus one will per damage you take. Yeah. Or wait, wait. Or, well, actually, let me read this again. You get okay. plus one will and deal plus one damage for this deck for each. Oh, okay. No, I think you're right. I think it okay, is plus okay. one will for each damage taken. That um, is good. So, yeah. So this one is just... It's very similar to the old one if you were to take two damage. Um, yeah, it kind of just removes the flexibility of it, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that the old one, you would often take three, but you might take two. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're playing it at all. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the hit points of the enemy you're fighting probably first and foremost yeah it also depends so like the old one was mostly only good in calvin um yeah so like you could take the damage to help calvin stats uh, and then later in the game you could take the damage and put like two of them on jessica mm -hmm. um so you might if you were had tons of trauma late game uh you might take less than three with calvin um so yeah um this one seems pretty solid um i think to me the biggest difference is the level one part and not that it costs less experience it's how many more investigators can play it when it's a level one card than when it's a level three card because one of the issues with blood eclipse was that like diana wished she could play it right 
yeah. or at least or at least diana might i don't know it's not it's, it was never a super powerful card but diana might have considered it if it was within her deck building guidelines and this one is and joe is another candidate who could consider taking this um and he's boosting his willpower a lot of the time with um the hawkeye folding camera that kind of thing so um i think he gets his willpower up to an okay spot um, well some joes i i prefer <laughs> you know to just take take it on the chin um, fair enough he is, he is pretty uh, unwillful uh, is it what's his base i forget is it two two oh, okay yeah, it's, okay it's so maybe miserable. this is still not a great joe card but... Um, but yeah no i think diana's a great shout i mean especially mm -hmm. if you've already taken deny existence five you might have the ability to heal a lot of damage so you don't care as much about taking damage um oh okay i was gonna say i don't think deny five can heal from this card i think it specifies in counter effects but but at least you could heal like the next time you would take damage you sure can deny five to heal it. right right um, um and this is i think this uh i don't know who in the world would do this but i think this is the first non-mystic spell with no it's not the first i was gonna say the first one that you can use arcane research to get a discount on upgrading from one version to the <laughs> next um but maybe that's not the case <laughs> i think like suggestion has two versions already and maybe a couple others yeah oh but. so one thing about this is uh Carolyn has been pretty marginal for the ability of Arcane Research, but like maybe this puts her over the edge where she mm. actually gets some benefit from Arcane Research now. Sure, yeah. Because she, she obviously yeah, is it's... very very limited in the number of things she can take, but she doesn't really mind starting with uh, Trauma because she can heal it for money. Right. So it's right. like if she can get anything out of Arcane Research, you know, it's maybe worth it. True, true. Yeah, and this is totally a, a decent Carolyn card. Because um, if you're playing a smoking pipe, I think you can convert it, or painkiller. There's one of the cards you can convert it to um, horror, and then she can heal it. Uh, that is painkillers. Yeah, pain converts damage to horror. Yeah, yeah. yeah good point. Um, okay, one more guardian card in the box. Survival knife level two. Uh, it's a two cost guardian asset. Two combat pips on it. Uh, it's an item, a weapon, and melee you can just fight and get plus two combat for the attack and then but when an enemy attacks you during the enemy phase before resolving that attack exhaust survival knife fight this attack targets the, the attacking enemy you get plus two combat and deal plus one damage for this attack um can you remind us how this is an upgrade right i think survival knife was level yeah. zero yep so the original one only gives plus one fight for this attack um hmm. but and it only gives one fight icon when you've committed to a test. Does it give plus damage on the counterattack? It does. So they don't oh. actually seem that different. Um, oh, so I think here's one difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one says when an enemy attacks you during the enemy phase before resolving. The other one says after an enemy attack deals damage to you. So I oh. think the new one you can dodge the effect. You can, is, if you kill the enemy with this reaction, it never hits you? Oh. Uh, probably so. That's that, before yeah. resolving that attack. I mean, yeah. if this was Magic the, if this was magic the Gathering, the attack would like already be on the stack and would still happen even if the enemy's killed. But I think under the rules of this game, this can prevent the attack. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the main difference. Like, yeah, that's a big plus difference. Plus two instead of plus one is not a big thing. But um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's a huge difference, because that means you can just, you know, you have a three damage enemy, you just put one damage on it with Beat Cop, and then wait for it to attack you for the other one, or provoke an opportunity attack. Um, well, right? it, still yeah, to, it still has to be enemy oh, phase. Oh, enemy so phase, not, you're right, you're right. Um, yeah, and you can also do the one damage just by using the survival knife. Um, sure, sure, you can so. still fight, and the and plus two combat is nice. You'll, you'll probably land that hit. Um, I love it. And it's it's another level two card, meaning lots of lots of investigators can take it. Uh, it seems really good. Yeah, I survival knife was one that was a bit controversial. I do mm -hmm. know some people that really like it. Um, I never, I it never quite worked for me because I generally feel like guardians are just supposed to kill everything. So like the whole thing of like leaving an enemy alive so that sure. I can counterattack, like it just didn't actually happen that often. Um, yeah, but this is much better if it lets you actually like kill them before they even touch you. Um, so yeah, I think it's yeah, definitely I'd worth say consideration. So. Um, 
Yeah. The, ol- the only thing to keep in mind is just it is a hand slot, so sure. Um, you know, some of your advanced guardian weapons, flamethrower, stuff like that, might conflict. Um, maybe it's a reason to take bandolier. I don't know. Goes well with the upgraded bandolier from the Return to Dunwich box. It's from a Return box. Yep. I remember. Which yeah. which upgrades your will to make your blood eclipses better. So there we go. We got a build going. All right. You know, that would be a really interesting card pool to build from. Like, what if you had just, like, a core set and all the return boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Two core sets and all the return boxes. What decks could you build? Yeah. Considering how many of these kind of just have, like, alternate versions of fairly staple cards, like, this kind kind of could be. Um, I don't know. You could you could maybe get there. Um, yeah. Okay. That's all the Guardian content in the box. Next we have... A seeker card that you are definitely going to have to tell me about because I probably, I don't think I've ever played this. Um, Truth from Fiction. This one is a level 2 seeker event that costs 1 resource, has 3 intellect icons on it. It's an insight and says place 2 secrets among assets controlled by investigators at your location. 3 secrets instead if there's a clue on your location. Um, Yeah, you're going to have to tell me what the original did. I don't know that I've ever played it. So the original cost one more, it cost two. It had one less icon, it had two book icons. Uh, it required there to be a clue at your location, and then it put two secrets on an asset you control. So it did not have the oh. ability to spread it across multiple assets or multiple investigators. Um, so yeah, theoretically, hmm. the, the old one was supposed to kind of combo with like Mr. Rook and uh, you know some of those other, I think Old Book of Lore upgraded uses secrets. Like it was supposed to yep. combo yep. with those secrets cards but i don't think anyone really played one of it. is it is it the ancient glyphs at least one of the upgraded the like seeker upgrade path cards um uses secrets oh, ancient stone uh, ancient uses stone secrets yeah okay yeah um, um, yeah it was just like the fa- it's not fast it only puts two on it costs mm-hmm. two it just wasn't really like efficient i would say right um, do you think this one is well, so, yeah, the fact that it costs one and puts three, um, that does change the math a lot. And it's only two XP. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I I think there will probably be more secret-focused uh, decks. Um, so, yeah, I like it. Yeah, and I, the secrets have gotten a lot of support lately, too, between things like Upgraded Old Book of Lore, some great cards that use them, Mr. Rook, obviously, although... If the taboo list comes out sometime <laughs> between now and the Innsmouth Conspiracy and does not taboo Mr. Rook, I will eat my hat. <laughs> um, but, um, so there's a lot more targets for it. And then there's also um, Astounding... Hmm. I don't... Uh, I'm not set up to look up cards on the fly. On oh, Astounding Revelation. Yeah, the, the well. research card that can drop secrets yeah. on your cards when you search them out of your deck. Uh, so like Mandy especially, but anyone can run that card. Um can can get a lot of repeat use out of secret assets that way um and actually old book of lore the upgraded version only came out the last pack it feels like it was ages ago because yeah, oh. you know but that That's... was actually only the last pack so it's possible that hmm. the base truth from fiction is already good because we just haven't figured out that oh it's like a great combo with upgraded old book of lore right. um but yeah i think now especially between the two cards um, i don't think it was the last pack was it it came out out together with abigail i think it was earlier in the cycle it was uh but it was in three meters or it it was one of the last packs oh okay yeah weaver of the cosmos was the final final pack yeah yeah it was where god's one the other one gotcha gotcha there's a like a four month difference there because of the covid (laughs) delays and when those came out so (laughs) um Okay, yeah, it doesn't, like, scream, like, secrets are a deck archetype now, but if you are running several, you know, if you have at least four asset, four cards in your deck that would benefit from being recharged by secrets, this is a pretty good candidate. I mean, I think you can technically run, like, seven cards that recharge secrets, like a three Astounding Revelation, two Enraptured, and two Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it, assuming your your seeker can run enraptured, yeah, which is like half the seekers can run it, right? I feel like. Right. Um. All right. Speaking of ancient stone, <laughs> obviously, I think every return box, at least the since the uh, since the Dunwich one, has had a new version of the seeker like mysterious artifact that you identify and it upgrades into something else. Uh, this one's no exception. We've got ancient stone transient thoughts. It's a two-cost level four seeker asset with two agility icons. 
An item and a relic takes up a hand slot. You can only include this asset in your deck by upgrading it from Ancient Stone Unidentified, and only if you have identified the stone in your campaign log. I think that's like all the others. It uses X secrets, where X is the number in parentheses next to you have identified the stone. As a reaction, when you draw any number of cards, spend that many secrets to move that many times. Ooh, that's pretty juicy. Uh, so remind me, there are are there two other ancient stones? Um, yeah. So there's the uh, deal damage one, mm -hmm. uh, which is great in min. Um, so you can draw. I think that card's pretty good for all like all secrets can if if they build around it a little bit have bursts of card draw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Ming kind of has, like, the built-in card draw from her signature and stuff. So, like, mm -hmm. it's maybe especially good. But, yeah, definitely good in, in a lot of Seekers. Um, and then there's the Horror Healing one, which is famous mm, right. for uh, you can take Shoot Analysis and Carolyn, and then it's the only available one. Um, oh, so, so she, she gets two gets for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it's still not even for. Well, I guess it's a powerful card for Carolyn, but it's it is not. A powerful card for it, it's it's not breaking the game that she gets a discount on. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this one seems real strong. It's. I I'm still like processing like, how often are you going to want to move simultaneous withdrawing cards? The thing is, what what it means is that any time you would move, you could instead take a draw card action, right, and just get a free card. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely best with single draws. Like, yeah, you can. It the one thing it's lacking is it doesn't let you choose to spend less secrets to draw less. So like, you could imagine mm. a scenario where like you have an enemy on you and you're trying to do a fast movement. So you play like a fast draw, like Cryptic Research. Sure. But that requires you to spend three secrets to draw three times, which is probably mm. not what you want to do. Or to move three times, time. yeah. Um, so it would be a little bit better if it said like when you draw any number of cards, you may spend up to this many secrets to move That's that true. many times. Yeah. Um, that said, though, the most common increment of cards that you draw is one. Yeah. Like there will yeah. be plenty of times when you would love a free move in your upkeep or you would love to just draw a card instead of taking a, a plain move action. Yeah, especially, I mean, if you're playing the big hand style Seekers, mm -hmm. um, using things like uh, dr uh, Truth Enhancing Serum, I think, or Dream Enhancing Serum. Dream Enhancing Serum, yeah. Um, then, oh, and also Lab Students, I think it is. Um, you don't sure. mind... You don't mind like spending a lot of your actions drawing instead of moving because mm -hmm. you can have a twelve card hand, you know. Right. So right. yeah, I think like just the idea of like I'm just gonna use the draw action instead of the move action is pretty efficient. And let's recap on here the X on the stone. I'm I'm trying to recall. It's you take like an intellect or you take an investigation test against like shroud plus two of your location. Shroud plus three, yeah. Shroud plus three, and then the if you pass the difficulty that the test was is how your x so like i'd say seven if you kind of if you find a four shroud location seven's a really common number to have there uh yeah. maybe eight and at that point you obviously have been throwing a few icons in or something like it's not a it's not an uh it, it's not no effort to identify the stone but it's not too bad and so yeah this comes into play and gives you basically seven or eight like actions worth of efficiency and some tricks to like oh i drew a card from mr rook here's a fast move that kind of thing uh seems nuts to me yeah especially i mean you were talking about mr rook probably ending up in the taboo list mm -hmm. i could also very easily see pathfinder ending up on the taboo list so in interesting you, yeah you might need another way to move efficiently in what way? You think Pathfinder should just cost more? Because it's one XP card already, Yeah, it's right? only one XP, and it doesn't take any kind of slot whatsoever. Um, True. So you can even play two Pathfinders. Um, so it's just, like, insanely yeah. efficient. Mm. Um, this card r does take a, a hand slot, so, and it's four XP. So, like, right. you can see how if you don't put Pathfinder on the taboo list, it's still generally more efficient than this. Yeah. But um, you can play both, or maybe Pathfinder gets tabooed, and so you play this instead. Um, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I'm sitting here really hyped up for this, and 
yeah, it's not as good as Pathfinder. <laughs> it's, it's probably probably not. It, not to say it's strictly worse. There are games and situations where this would be better, but I'd say as far as which card you'd generally rather have in your deck, yeah, it's Pathfinder. And that's less XP, and you don't have to jump through hoops to earn it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, oh boy. <laughs> Rogue's got a card that um, I've always loved the idea of, and it's never been very good. Uh, decorated Skull, Doom Begets Doom. This is a level 3 rogue asset that's zero cost. It's an item, a relic, and it's cursed. It sits in your accessory slot. It uses zero charges. As a reaction, after an investigator, ally asset, or enemy from your location is defeated, place one resource from the token bank on Decorated Skull as a charge. Action, spend that many charges, draw that many cards, and gain that many resources. Um, so is this just it's consolidated up to three charges per action? Is that the main difference here? Yeah. Which So the old one, you just spent one charge, and then you mm -hmm. drew one card and one resource. So it basically made your draw action or your resource action a little bit more efficient. Right. But it wasn't right. like a drastically improved action. It was just... Instead of drawing a card and no resources, you drew a card and gained one resource. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this now makes it so even if all you cared about was cards or all you cared about was resources, it's still a more efficient action. Right. Um, to, honestly, to me, what jumps out at me is this lets you like almost store your hand size in a safe place where like if you have amnesia in your deck, you can build up some charges on this and then, oh no, I drew Amnesia. I'll spend my next two actions drawing six cards and I'm right back in the game, you know? Or uh, I, you can tell I just played City of Archives on uh, on my Forgotten Age campaign earlier this week, but like when you're trying to get your hand full, right? I think you're trying to get your hand up to 10 or more cards in yeah. City of Archives. Yeah. Uh, th this is a little cheat to do that. So <laughs> to, to me, that's the most interesting thing here is the, that burst card draw. Um which it takes a little work to get. You have to have at least three uh, characters defeated at your location, basically. It doesn't matter whether they're friendly or enemy. Um, that, well, the, I think, is the most exciting thing, but it also just seems like a pretty good econ card. Yeah, we also did come out with uh, Tony since Decorated Skull came out. So, like, the other mm -hmm. problem with this is that a lot of the characters that could take it were not that great at killing stuff. So, yeah. like, Ursula can take it, but Ursula doesn't want this. Yeah. Um, a lot of rogues, like, their goal is not to kill a lot of stuff, and they're hopefully true, not true. losing a ton of allies. Yeah. Um, but Tony can just, like, murder tons of stuff. Um, so I think mm -hmm. even the original Decorated Skull, like, became better with Tony, but hmm. then this is just a lot better. I'm trying to think what accessory was I even running with Tony. I played a good amount of Tony, and I can't remember an accessory being all that important to him. So, so this could... Yeah, oh, it was, oh, wait, wait, wait. It was Garrot Wire. Mm. Oh, what, and I love Garrot Wire. I think I even ran Relic Hunter in a Tony campaign so I could have two of them in play at the same time <laughs> and, like, get two swarming enemies in the Dream Eaters campaign <laughs> each turn. <laughs> um, mm, I think that's tough competition for Tony. Garrot Wire is great. Yeah, that it's a good point. Maybe you play Relic Hunter and you play one of each. Yeah, um, maybe so. <laughs> But, or uh, play two copies of each in your deck, and, and you may end up with one of each in play. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, if you do play Relic Hunter and have two copies of this in play, you're just getting double charges per... Uh, you're getting double charges per kill, right? Yeah. yeah. But you have to take That's separate cool. actions to, to, to spend To them. use them, yeah. But, yeah, it basically just doubles the speed that this charges kind of effectively. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah. Huh. All right. Uh, next we've got... Another card you'll definitely have to tell me what this did. Uh, the Cult Vest Pocket. This is a level 2 rogue asset that costs 2 resources. It's an item, a weapon, a firearm, and illicit. Fits it in one hand and uses 5 ammo. It says action, spend 1 ammo, fight. You get plus 2 combat for this attack. This attack deals plus 1 damage. Okay. Forced at the end of the round, if you triggered Cult Vest Pocket's action ability, discard it. Oh, that's a little bit of a reminder of what it did. But why don't you read us the old one? Yeah, so the old one uh, only gave one uh, plus one for the attack. And okay. then it always discarded at the end of the turn. Um, but otherwise... Oh, it's basically a... at the end of the turn that you played it effectively? Like yeah. if it's in play? It... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's the same cost. It was no XP and it was one uh, agility icon so just missing a fist icon but not a huge difference 
Um, yeah, this seems like actually one of the least changed uh, cards. Yeah, me. it's pretty subtle. And was the old one level zero? Yeah. Okay. Um, still doesn't seem great to me. <laughs> I mean, because it uses five ammo, you definitely want to use it with rogues that are playing tricks to get uh ideally five actions which tony gets one for free for fighting um the the fact that you don't have to play it as one of those actions is a huge leg up because you can just pre kind of prep it and then w when the stars align for a huge turn or that boss fight or whatever you can just unload it um but i don't know that i would put it in my deck over some of the other options especially in tony who can run guardian weapons to a point um, I don't uh, know. Do you, do you no, see... no, Tony can't run guardian weapons. He can only run skills. Oh, I actually. forgot that he's not just level zero through two guardian. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, so the the original cult vest That's... pocket, you you definitely run in like a very sleight of hand oriented. Um, yeah. Rogue, uh, which is why I'm not like super impressed with this version. Like, I feel like if you're sleight of handing it, there's not a big difference other than this one is plus one more to your attack. Um, so like this would not be a priority upgrade for me yeah and i mean this kind of like it eliminates the need to sleight of hand it so much i guess sleight of hand with this still means you get it back a second time huh to, to yeah you, you get it back in your hand but um, like so but it, i mean the, the ideal scenario for the original one is you sleight of hand it mm -hmm. you shoot it three or four times it returns the hand then the next turn you like play it again uh maybe you slide of hand or maybe you just play it you shoot it a couple more times and then you sell it to the new joy the rat who's you can sell oh, your yeah. assets to right um, right so that was like the ideal for the old one mm -hmm. and i feel like the old one was fine for that like the only real advantage that this one has is plus one more combat which mm -hmm. is it, it does mean something like obviously plus one is not amazing so plus two is, is better um, but it just wouldn't be like one of the early upgrades that I got, like just to get plus one more without right, any more damage right. or anything. Um, and then I don't usually talk much about the um, promo investigators that are previewed in some of the novels, but Dexter Drake recently came out and is going to be in the Innsmouth box uh, later this year. Uh, so he's imminently coming to the game in full with his real cards. Um, he can take this, right? Uh, yeah. I and he and he, I know... I'm trying to remember exactly what he does, but I know he's about cycling assets in and out of play, right? Yeah, so Dexter Drake, I believe, can take Rogue up to two. Um, yeah, he can, because I've seen him with, like, High Roller and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, he um, can switch it for a different asset in your hand. Um, so, yeah, this both Cult Best Pockets could fit with him, but this yeah, one maybe okay. more, because I think his base fight is three. So, mm. you know, four is, like, not amazing but five is substantially better um so yeah you might consider uh this one in dexter drake okay so yeah it might be that it's in here largely like i think um i think tony has some uses for it and then dexter is coming out uh i guess we have the starter decks but the next like standard box product part of the usual lcg schedule is dexter's release so this yeah. might just be be here waiting for him too um all right speaking of mystics and and mists uh we've got a level two mists of uh Rilia. this i recently once um i think it was when i was playing cthulhu death may die i looked up how to pronounce this word and it turns out that it's like intentionally like not only was it unclear from the books uh that use the term but like people have intentionally like not come to a come to a consensus so that there's like no right way to pronounce it it's just unpronounceable but anyway uh, Mists of Rilia is my favorite way I've heard, heard it said. It's a two-cost mystic asset that's level two. It's a spell. Uses five charges. Actions spend one charge to evade. This evasion attempt uses willpower instead of agility. You get plus one willpower for this evasion attempt. If you succeed, after evading the chosen enemy, you may move to a connecting location. If a bad stuff token is revealed during this evasion attempt, choose and discard a card from your hand. And it's a spell that sits in the uh, arcane slot, I don't think I said. So this is basically the most predictable card imaginable to sit in that. There's there's a level zero and a level four version of Mists of Relia yeah. already, I think. Relia? Yeah. Um, yeah, this seems good, and I'm very happy that Patrice can take it. 
because Patrice yeah. is another one who uh, is tempted to take arcane research, but then doesn't have quite it doesn't have like a whole campaign's worth of targets to use it on. Uh, yeah. So this is this is one that she can take. I think I'll be really happy to run this in Patrice. Um, but it's like completely unexciting. I don't know. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I actually I forgot about Patrice. Um, I think you're right. This is really like Rite of Seeking Two. It's really just an arcane research um, like stepping stone. Uh, yeah. more than like something that you're really excited about so mm -hmm. the differences from level zero is it has one more charge and gives you one more will um so it's mm -hmm. it's not nothing but it's not like a super exciting upgrade right it's also kind of described right of seeking two which was a plus two will upgrade but nothing else different um so yeah i think it's it's just a arcane research stepping stone yeah okay keep that one quick uh, the Chthonian Stone is, in this case, a level 3 mystic asset. It costs 2 resources. It's an item, a relic, and cursed. And it says, seal the skull, cultist, tablet, or elder thing token. But this one uses 3 charges. If the Chthonian Stone has no charges, return it to your hand. After you reveal an autofail symbol during a skill test, remove 1 charge from the Chthonian Stone. Um, and this takes up a hand slot. Uh, remind me how the last one worked, if you could. So the old one costed one more. It cost three. Mm. And then as soon as you revealed an auto-fail, it just re uh, returned automatically. So it had no, didn't have okay. three auto-fails. Really. Right. Okay. So I remembered all that. I do, do not know if I would have pinpointed that this is one cheaper in resources. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, honestly, when you think of how, obviously everyone has stories of the game where they drew seven auto-fails, but how many do you really draw in most games? Like... Oh, and especially since you'll play this probably not first turn of the game. So, in, you know, the two third, how many do you draw in a half a game or two thirds of a game or something? I think this is probably just going to sit, going to stay in play. It's probably not going to get returned anymore. Yeah, you probably draw an average like two. So, like, probably yeah. the old one does get returned most games, and this one will not get returned most games. So, pretty big difference. Yeah. So, then the question is. Now that the kind of the worst thing about the last one is largely eliminated, is it a good card? How valuable do you think sealing, taking up a hand slot to seal one of these tokens is? A lot of mystics don't care about their hand slots that much. Um, True. So definitely, I mean, you definitely are going to want it if you are doing any kind of ba other bag sealing because like bag sealing kind of, it gets better and better, you know, um, mm -hmm. like if you can remove all of the skulls and just never have to worry about a skull, that's better than just reducing the amount of skulls because it's an entire token that you just don't have to worry about anymore. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're doing other bag sealing, but even if you're not, if you just don't have a lot of use for your hand slots um, and you have XP, uh, I think it's definitely worth considering. Yeah, yeah, I think... That I've, I've actually played the Chthonian Zone a good amount because I like, I enjoy, like, I think one of the coolest things about the Chaos Bag is that it can be manipulated. So I enjoy yeah. this, I enjoy sealing tokens. I like that mechanic a lot. Um, it's, there, there's been no argument ever that it was a strong card, right? <laughs> like, I'd put it into play and just, like, hope that it lasted long enough that I could claim it made some subtle impact in our, in our doing well in the scenario. Um, and then the nature of sealing is that you can never know for sure whether you would have ever drawn that, to drawn that token well, anyway. So I did um, hear, it might have been Drawn to the Flame said, when you seal something, you can put, like, a placeholder oh. token back in the bag. And then when you draw that, you're like, this is what I would have drawn if not for a Chthonian Stone, which I think is a cool idea. So, That's a fun idea. I like that. And playing so much Arkham on Tabletop Simulator lately, that can be anything. You can throw, like, a elephant in the bag and then yeah. the, the mod will draw it just like a chaos token. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Oh, I actually love that idea. Thank you, Drawn to the Flame. Um, I'm going to try that when I uh, when I try out this card, which I certainly will. Um, cool. We're up to Survivor. And whoops, dropped a card on the floor. Guess that doesn't matter. Uh, okay, this I think is a lower level version of a card that actually is quite good and quite interesting. It is level one Alter Fate. It's a spell, it's blessed, and it's a three-cost survivor event. It says, choose and discard from play a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. 
Uh, so the original, I think, is level three. It's higher level, but remind, how is its text different? So two big differences. The old one costs one, so a third as much. And it's Oh, fast. one resource. Yeah. And it's fast and can be played mm. in any player window. So hmm. that's a lot more flexible. Like, you can yeah. um, think about uh, Circle Undone has all those treacheries that are like, if the third one goes into the threat area, um, bad stuff happens. Uh, if your uh, guardian, who has terrible will, draws the third one of those cards, and you're like, oh my god, we're screwed. This guardian is definitely going to fail this Terra in the Night test. Your survivor can actually play Alter Fate during that player window mm -hmm. and get rid of one of the two. And now you're like, okay, it doesn't matter if the Guardian screws this up. Right. Um, Alter Fate, the original, was just an incredibly, incredibly flexible card. Right. Um, this, by costing a lot more money and not being fast, is obviously just way less flexible. But the original yeah. was so good that like, you might still consider this. Yeah, uh, so this is interesting because so many of the like downgrades, for lack of a better term, so many of the cards in these return boxes that are a lower level version than their original are a lower level version of a card that no one was playing anyway. And yeah. it's always kind of struck me as like, all right, we kind of liked that concept, but it landed up, it ended up too weak. Uh, we want we want to reuse its art, <laughs> like, let people enjoy its art. Like let's put out a new version of it, and that yeah. will kind of become the only one people consider. But this is interesting because it's a lower level version that is like significantly worse than the one we have, but it but it's a lower level. Uh, so it's a really interesting decision. Um, I could I think the main reason I would run this because it seems it doesn't read to me like it's that great a card, right? Three three resources a card and an action to discard treachery from play. Like it's gotta be a real clutch treachery that you're getting rid of. Otherwise that is a steep cost. Yeah. Um, but if you eventually want the level three version, you can buy this now and just pay the difference when you upgrade, right? Or, or it's a spell. So Patrice even can use arcane research on this too, I think. Uh, so for that reason, as a stepping stone, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it is also, um, like, Agnes can run this and can't run the original, and she can find it with Arcane Initiate. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, if there's enough really bad treacheries, you know, Agnes might consider it. Um, hmm. A lot of the bad treacheries, though, are will tests, and in that case, Agnes can just test them. You know, like, all those yeah. witch treacheries in Circle Undone, Agnes right. doesn't really need to spend $3 in a card to deal with. She can just test it. Yeah. She's got great will. It is just the right price to line up with Uncage the Soul if you're running that. That's true. Yeah, you, you know? can Uncage the Soul it. Um, that's pretty solid. Um, oh, uh, Mar oh no, Marie does not have access to this. I was going to say Marie could do it actionless with Doom, but she doesn't have Survivor 1 access. Um, oh, right, right. So. Hmm. Interesting. Also, uh, when this card came out, little did we, or maybe preview articles were out and we knew, but this is foreshadowing for the Circle Undone cycle, right? <laughs> With the tower card and the art. Uh, mm, I just think yeah. that's pretty cool and thought I'd call attention to it. Um, okay, I recall this next one uh, being in like the original announcement article for the Forgotten Age box and people being quite excited for it. Uh, so we've got On Your Own. It is a level three survivor asset with no cost because it's permanent... And it's exceptional. So this is actually a, similar to almost like a level six. It costs six experience. Um, it's talent traded and says, your investigator gains deck building restrictions, no assets that take up an ally slot. And then reaction, whenever you play a survivor event, exhaust on your own to reduce that event's cost by two. Okay, so the I've never played the previous on your own. I recall it uh, not wanting to, allies to be around either, but... I don't know. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it was that great. Can you remind us how this is different? So this is the first card that has two different versions that are the same level. Um, so the first one is oh, also level three. It is level three. Interesting. But the old one is not exceptional. Hmm. Um, so they did increase the XP, but it's still weird because you can't actually say on your own three and have oh, people know who yeah. you're talking about. That's, I have to change my whole... So to put to put the cards on the screen that our viewers are seeing, I scan them and I, I name all the files with the card name and then in parentheses, the level, uh, I have to come up with a new system now. <laughs> damn it. Yeah, damn you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the old one, it, you have to actually find it. 
Um, it's a talent, limit one for investigator. Um, you discard it if you have an ally. Um, mm. And then it, otherwise it has the same effect. Uh, when you play a survivor event, it reduces cost by two. Right. Um, so really, I think what makes this one so much more powerful is that if you're going to give up allies, which are super powerful, um, you want the consistency of like, at least I'm going to find the payoff for not having allies. You right, know? right. Uh, the old one, you could not include allies in your deck, and then you never draw it, you know? And then you're yeah. like, wow, that was a total waste that I I'll, took out. Peace although I'll push, I'll push back slightly, like, allies themselves have that problem, right? You can put allies in your deck and then never draw them. So, I don't know. Yeah. T to me, the issue with the card was just it's functionally an ally, right? Like, it doesn't take up your ally slot. It just doesn't. But it kind of, but it does for all intents and purposes. It's uh it, it takes up an ally slot. It's just a little worse because charisma doesn't let you have two it doesn't let you have an ally and this or and the original on your own. Um so yeah, it always bothered me that this card existed that was an ally was a, in ninety nine percent of cases was functionally an ally and just wasn't technically one. Well, it all, there are some differences too though like so allies have soak so you can yeah. play you can put two allies in your deck um even if you only have one ally slot and you might end up killing off the first one mm -hmm. uh and playing the second one whereas if you were to put pete sylvester and on your own in your deck um the original mm -hmm. if you drew on your own first uh you can't really like play pete, you can't like just take soak on it and then play pete right. sylvester right um, so it was a little bit more awkward than so it was a bad ally <laughs> it was like an ally well, with zero was... zero printed on the bottom or null null and it, it had limit one per investigator too so it was like there was no way to include two to make it more likely to draw mm. uh in the way that if you have a really important ally you would put two in really to help you it's yeah. limit it's limit one in your deck yep or, or oh wait Oh no, limit one for investigator. Uh, no, yeah, you oh, could put no, two no, in your no, deck, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. It's just one it's only one in play. Yeah. But yeah, like there's no unlike like when you draw a second Leo de Luca, at least you're like, well, if I get hit with a bad treachery, I have the option of killing off my first Leo de Luca. Right. And then playing the second one, so the second one's not totally worthless. Like the second on your own was quite worthless. Um Right, right. So, so yeah, I, I've hmm. never really heard of anyone playing it. So this fixes on your own, not at all in the way that I thought it would or should have been fixed. Like, I half expected it to be tabooed and mutated to, like, the way I always wished it should it would work was that it would remain in play and just only function when you didn't have an ally, and then you'd run things like stray cats that come and go, you know? Um, yeah. I thought that that would actually be a very well-designed card, but it, and it was like what the, con the premise of on your own kind of wanted to be, and it didn't deliver on. This... Is all is now a, a card you might consider running, but uh, did not go that direction. Um, hmm. So do people think this? People think this is good. I know people have been talking about it for a while, but I haven't really paid attention. I'm not sold on it, but maybe that's just because survivors have some really good allies that they tend to really build around, right? Like Madame Lebranche and Peter Sylvester. They do also, though, have maybe the most powerful expensive event in the game in Will to Survive. Hmm. Um, so being able to play will to survive for two every turn um is very powerful like yeah especially you have resourceful which is guaranteed bring get it, it back, back mm. if it's on the will to survive test um so that's four turns that you don't have to take tokens that you're only spending two dollars each of those turns um and then there's some other cards that are like a little bit less efficient for recursion but you might still consider um, like, I think there's a survivor card that just takes a level zero card back into your hand. Um, it's not normally hmm. played, but if, if you're going right. all, yeah. I it's like strong for supplies. That maybe, sounds right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So you could play that to get resourceful back and then resourceful to get will survive back. Um, so like I could definitely see a pretty good deck hmm. that is all about playing will to survive like five or six times. Yeah, it sh it sure sets it sure creates an archetype, right? Like, what can you dream up with events when they all cost two less? It's uh, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty exciting actually in that respect. Um, it also makes Alter Fate level one quite a bit better. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, Definitely. even stuff like kind of just utility cards that you might put in like that. Um, that becomes a card I would run at three cost, not nearly as appealing. Um, yeah. hmm. Okay. I'm interested to build around it. Um, and I know I, I, it's, it's partly because I'm in the middle of a campaign with Patrice right now, but I keep bringing up Patrice. But uh, Patrice's challenge with allies is that they're expensive generally, and she doesn't like expensive assets because sometimes when she draws them, she doesn't have enough resources and then has to flush them. This is a great solution to a lot of Patrice's problems, right? She doesn't, it's one less asset she has to like have the resources for on the turn she draws it, and it lets her run expensive events that she ordinarily wouldn't have. Uh, I think that's where I'm most excited to try this. Yeah, the other two that I would look at, uh, well, definitely Wendy. There's always been like weird, abusive, um, like Wendy will to survive decks. Mm. But um, Silas and Yorick are great with you catastrophe, uh, which allows mm. you to do even more recursion. Uh, and mm. you catastrophe is a two cost event. Um, yeah, okay. So because Yorick and Silas both have like amazing Elder Sign abilities that return cards. Um, I would consider it in them, even though there is some anti-synergy yeah. with Yorick because he can reuse allies, but uh, I still think his Elder Sign is so good. Like Being able to play Yucatastri for free and then take any card back um, is r super strong. Right. Yeah. Huh. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's... Hmm. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resist going on my rant about... Um... I don't like exceptional outside of rogue. I thought it was. I think it's cool for the colors to have things that are like their special thing. Uh, but I've I've had I've said I've made that basic argument five times on here by now. Uh, okay. Uh, well, so, yeah, they they could have just made this on your own five. Yeah. I guess I guess it's because they also have a color pie thing where they don't like where they don't have above level three. More than three. And that's, yeah, it's funny. I used to really defend that that for the exact same reason that i just think it's it's it I, that each color should have things that make it special that there should not be a level four or five survivor assets because that's one thing that it's kind of flavorful in its own right that they just use kind of whatever they can find not super powerful special stuff um and it's just a unique trait to the class but then someone pointed out well that means that other investigators can run survivor card like almost everything survivors printed and it makes Survivor in that right much less unique and special, just because very few Survivor cards cannot be played off class. Yeah, uh, Lola, and, can, Lola can play every Survivor card. Right, yeah. And that was, especially when it comes to like internet conversations, that is one of my most, the most vivid memories I ever have of being instantly had my mind changed. Like that was such a great point that I was like, oh yeah, my opinion was the exact opposite of what it was before you said that thing. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that arguing on the internet is productive. Yes. It changes people's minds. Arguing with me on the internet is productive, <laughs> at least. It changes my mind. So, you know, bring on the YouTube comments. <laughs> um, okay, we're done with colored cards, and there's still a decent handful left, uh, including one more level one, or uh, one more leveled up player card, the Backpack. Kind of an innocuous neutral card from the cycle that uh, i'm surprised is in here but it's a level two one resource cost asset it's an item it sits in your body slot and says after backpack enters play search the top 12 cards of your deck for up to three non-weakness item or supply cards and attach them face down to backpack shuffle your deck cards attached to backpack may be played as if they were in your hand if there are no cards attached to backpack discard it um is the only difference here that you used to search fewer cards uh, so it's twice as many cards for half the cost. Oh, it's cheaper uh, on resources so this, too. Okay. This is a huge upgrade. Mm hmm I mean, twice as many that you search. It's the the best case scenario for both is three cards. But you uh, rarely oh, got yes. three cards when you were searching six. Yeah, when you're only searching six, the odds of three... I mean, you can try to put a lot of items and like supply includes emergency cash you can try to put a lot in your deck but you don't usually have it's not like the majority of your deck is probably going to be traded with those things so uh yeah it was rare that you actually hit all three with 12 cards it's a lot more realistic yeah i think this is a very good card yeah um, backpack was like marginally decent like it was never amazing but i was always trying to make it work and yeah, I remember that. Like, you always tried to make it work. <laughs> it like halfway work. Uh huh. Uh, so like some of the use cases for it was uh, Preston um, has very limited in what weapons he can take. Mm -hmm. So including in Preston to help him find his fire axe uh, was good. Um, you 
could put it in Mandy, and then she could search nine. Um, so yeah, there were like marginal uses. Like Carolyn got okay value from it, but like this is just way better for only two XP. So right. I think it's kind of a no brainer. Any deck that you would consider putting the original in, try to find room for two XP to to put this one in. Uh, yeah, yeah, seems great. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say about it. It feels basically the same role in your deck. It just does its job well enough to justify being in your deck which the, which the other ones so often didn't quite get there uh very cool uh we've got four weaknesses to read through which i feel like is a lot for a return box um yeah. all right well since you uh no long these are oh, i'm flipping through them they're all brand new they're not alternate versions so you no longer have the job of filling us in uh do you have them available do you want to read the first one yeah sure um i don't know if i can pronounce it but i think it's dendromorphosis <laughs> dendromorphosis i think sure yeah yeah obviously mm -hmm. uh natural transformation um so it's an asset with two hand slots mm -hmm. um and one health revelation uh put dendromorphosis into play in your threat area it cannot leave play while it has no damage on it and then as a fast action take a direct damage to deal a damage to this uh, and it was designed by the botanist at Arkham Knights <laughs> 2018. Uh, That's flavor, very funny. The flavor text is plants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was, as you read that, I was frantically trying to look up the... So I was at this Arkham Knights. I have copies of the original version of this card. And the way it works is a council of 12 attendees at Arkham Knights work together to design a card. But then... It goes through a pretty ordinary like play testing and revision process and comes out as you, it's nearly two years later in this case right this was october 2018 um i wish that i could tell you off the top of my head how it has evolved in play testing because i think that is so um interesting but it kind of looks the same as i remember it um so this is a weakness that takes up both hand slots like that is that is the worst part of this right yeah, I mean, this could be really devastating if you just put out your, like, 5 XP weapon and mm -hmm. then you draw this. Like, I mean, that is one of the worst weaknesses if yeah. you have any kind of good weapon out. Yeah, yeah, this is terrible. This is this is so bad for certain investigators that, like, I've never been one to redraw if I don't get a basic weakness I don't like. But this is so brutal that it, this is one of those ones that will tempt you to do that, right? uh yeah and... i like obviously there's a few investigators that wouldn't care so like yeah if you draw this in mystic you probably just take the hand slots out of your deck you know like right. none of the hand slots in mystic are like essential to your strategy yeah you know? yeah just so don't just spend... level up that chthonian stone just level exactly. out of it yeah <laughs> exactly like you're just like okay i can live with that chthonian stone mm -hmm. um but like guardians can't live without hand slots, you know. No. Um, even rogues, like they need lock picks. If they're yeah, thin, between weapons and lock need... picks, yeah. Um. So yeah, that's Whew. brutal. Um, yeah, and then it's it's so unlike other weaknesses. It has soak on it, but then it just has a fast ability that you can take one damage to deal one damage to it, which will discard it, right? Yeah. Um. So it's it's basically it's almost like a treachery that just says discard any cards occupying your hand slots and take one damage, right? Because a lot of the time you'll probably just take the damage to get rid of this right away. It offers yeah. the opportunity to have it stick around and actually soak a damage instead, which is pretty interesting. I don't know if it's like kind of worth the like complexity of the card for something that you probably won't do most of the time you'll probably just want to get rid of it and be able to play things in your hands again um but you know that is how these designed by council cards tend to be it's they're, they're like uh, interesting but a little more complicated than, <laughs> than they maybe should be but i don't know any thoughts on the like damage to remove it uh part? you know if you draw it near the end of your deck you might try to leave it around until you cycle mm -hmm. um is one difference between that and just taking a damage uh well uh, cycling your deck only does horror which would yeah help but then you don't draw it again so, oh like, if I, I see what you're saying so that it goes to your deck, new your new discard pile okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i got you sure that um, makes sense mm -hmm. so i do that a lot with like the two click weaknesses like if i draw them near the end of my deck i'm like i'm gonna try to you know hold on to this until right I cycle um so 
But yeah, it's it's brutal. I'm looking forward to playing with it. Like it's it sounds like a fun challenge. Like mm-hmm. maybe if you're guardian, you take bandolier, um, and so you have three yeah. hand slots. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. that's probably the way you'd build around this. Yeah, if you're a guardian. Other and other then, ones are not so, so seekers. Lucky. Seekers, you could upgrade the magnifying glasses and then really try to diligently always take them back into your hand. Yeah. Um, so like you know, there's a couple different ways to play around it. Um, maybe some people take like scrying or something to try to like get rid of the weakness. Um, yeah, I, hmm. it'll be interesting to see if it's like a fun to play around thing yeah. or if it's really annoying. But I'm curious. I, I do want to try it once. Yeah, same. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, at this point, how many there are. 40 or more basic weaknesses or we're getting up there so each any given one you're gonna see like i don't know if, if you play a campaign of arkham a month you're gonna see it once every two years now <laughs> right? uh so it's not going to like none of these is going to dramatically change the way the game functions really uh, although you but... do like i mean wh- whenever you play a standalone and take like three weaknesses like that Good point. increases the number that you take so yeah if I mean, you play standalone like, a lot and also like i mean even if it's like someone else in your group having the weakness like it still makes a big effect you know like it's true i yeah. was playing with the dexter drake the other day that was trying to go for big money and then he drew uh paranoia and lost all the money and it was like "Ooh, that's the problem with your strategy <laughs> yeah um, so like it can definitely be funny even if you're not the one that has it good point good point um all right We've got so flipping through these next three weaknesses all have very similar art, almost like the uh, le- the upgrade paths to the multi class player cards. Like I can see that they are subtly different from one another, which I think is super cool. I I, I really like when they're doing this with the art. Uh, anyway, that's all. The first one is offer you cannot refuse. It's a basic weakness, treachery, uh, pact traded, uh, campaign mode only. When you become the bearer of this weakness, gain two experience. What? This seems great. Yeah, I love it. All right, let's just stop there. Thank you for watching. Uh, (laughs) Take every offer you're given. Uh, No, I have a feeling there's a downside. Uh, The revelation is lose five resources. If you cannot, instead remove offer you cannot refuse from your deck, search the collection for fine print, and place in your discard pile. Oh, this is not three different weaknesses. This is an upgrading weakness like Doom is. Okay, I, 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 I had no idea. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you, do you have fine print in front of you? You wanna read that for us? Yeah, so that is also a pact. Revelation, lose seven resources. If you cannot, instead remove fine print from your deck, search the collection for <laughs> Slayer Soul and place it in your discard pile. And it says, your scarlet signatures drop drips from its surface. Love it. And then sell your soul. Uh, it says, uh, it's a pact. Revelation, lose 10 resources. If you cannot, your dark patron tears your consciousness from your body. You are driven insane. One way or another, the debt shall be repaid. Wow. So this actually is a variant on Doomed in a lot of ways, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I Maybe they kind of were like, we want to do a fairer version of Doomed. Because um, mm-hmm. Doomed, like, there wasn't a ton you could do. Um, you know, you could try to take, like, Alyssa Graham or something to discard yeah. it. But, like, in general, it could knock you out of a campaign pretty quickly without I... you having too much control. And I... You could, although that one didn't knock, wouldn't kill you until you had drawn it five times. Versus this one can kill you in three. Uh, so, uh, so sometimes you'd have Doomed in your deck, and you know you've you've put cards in your deck that you get to the fifth scenario of your campaign and be like, "Wow, I've never drawn this." Like Doomed could I, can do that. I drew Doomed three times in one scenario <laughs> once. Um, so I I do not play with it anymore. Like that, mm. it's just not fun for me. Uh, oh wow no the the time that i had doomed i played around it a lot being careful not to draw more cards than i needed to um it was the dunwich legacy campaign i was playing two players with a co-worker i ended up drawing the bell tolls and being killed the round that we would have escaped through the portal and won shattered eons 
Uh, and then my and then my friend that I was playing with was able to get the last couple clues and go on without me. So it was like the most perfect cinematic, like my doom has found me here out in the eternities. I have fallen down dead one step from the end of our, our journey. Like it was actually such a great moment that it made me really fall in love with that card. Uh, and then I've never just, ha I've, I've haven't happened to get it since. So I have really no negative experiences with doomed. Um, so from that perspective, <laughs> I'm pretty excited for this card. <laughs> no, I, to me, like this is a lot fairer, um, because yeah, you can play with it. Um, I wonder, so if you play deny existence on this, does that count? So it says lose 10 resources if you cannot, mm -hmm. if you deny existence, you don't lose 10, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily cannot lose 10. I am curious yeah. what that like what the good question. It doesn't say if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know how that interacts. Can deny existence cancel weakness effects? Yeah, uh, hmm. Diana players use it on her signature. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. All the time. Yeah. Um hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's something that we'll have to look for a ruling on cuz that's a great question. Um all in all, this seems pretty bad though. Is is if you want to you know, not even not even uh, let it advance ever. You basically have to keep five resources in your pocket all the time, which, but it's not the same as just you have five less resources. You just have that constant temptation to like, oh, I really need to play that card, but it's going to drop me down to four resources. Do, am I going to risk it? Uh, I think that that is going to be brutal, but also a super interesting like decision tree that it creates for you. I'm I'm pretty stoked for this. I like it. Yeah, it's. You know, tower, I feel like, is one of the worst weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and that one taxes you four, four yeah. resources and an action. But, you like, it's okay if you, generally okay if you go a turn or two before you play it. You right, know? Like, yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, this one, you don't, you have no flexibility in when you spend the money. So, yeah, pretty, pretty nasty. Right. Uh, so that does it for this box. Um, what I thought was three more weaknesses was just a try card weakness. Um, what do you What do you think of the cards? Uh, so pretty interesting. Um, definitely like the ones that were like kind of marginal cards, like yeah. Survival Knife and Truth and Fiction and Decorated Skull. Like the marginal cards with upgraded versions are the ones I'm most excited about. Um, on your own, I'm kind of excited about too. Mm -hmm um and yeah the weaknesses also like those are those are pretty neat i think in general and i was just talking about this uh with kyle and ian who i play with on twitch um now and then about how the return boxes have generally not delivered a whole lot like they have uh if you look at any given box there's like maybe two out of 10 to 12 cards really ended up being all that interesting i think that this was higher than that i think there's a, a i think the majority of these have the potential to be be really uh really good options for your deck so um i think to that end like i think it's probably pretty successful um and i'm pretty excited to play with a lot of these uh yeah i would agree i think that the, yeah some of the previous ones were like kind of marginal like even like i remember one of them i think maybe return to night of the zealot offered the like zero cost talent they were like much better than the Corset yeah they were versions. like level level two uh, but still kind of once the card pool grew, no one was playing the exactly. like, re resource they were like for, much, skill, for skill. Yeah, They were much better than the originals, but they still weren't like making the cut in most mm -hmm. decks. Mm -hmm. um, whereas these, it feels like a lot of these will make the cut. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so, wow, we're over an hour. Uh, we had, I guess when you're comparing every card to a previous version, <laughs> we, we go on a little longer. Uh, but... Uh, we're going to, if you don't want to join us for a few minutes about talking about what the uh, box has brought to the campaign for the Forgotten Age, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you'll check out uh, more uh, videos, lots of Arkham content, and content uh, with playthroughs of lots of other games on uh, youtube.com slash optimal play, and we'd love likes on this video and subscriptions. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you, oh man. Uh, in a few weeks, we've got starter decks coming our way. Uh, we still need to figure out exactly how we're going to review those cards and release the videos, but I think I might be envisioning 10 videos, <laughs> like two per deck because there's so many cards. 
Um, so <laughs> definitely subscribe and look out for those. They should be coming starting around the end of August, it sounds like, is the release date for those, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, with that, we're going to pivot over to talking campaign. So uh, goodbye if you're spoiler reverse. Now, hello. Welcome to Spoiler Talk with Steven and Brandon. This is this is a, a new microphone that I don't know how this is working. Like this is sounding cool or awful. But anyway, so there, the Forgotten Age has a good amount of pretty significant issues. Like the Explorer mechanic is, is really punishing. The supplies are really punishing. Um, I, when we talked through the campaign last week, I generally thought that those wouldn't change because the return boxes don't really do much that a, uh, that like a card can't do. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that this insert is two whole pages now. It's twice as much paper as is, has been in these past boxes. And two of, two of these pages are actually um, additional, I'm gonna just, this is good entertainment, additional campaign guide instructions. So what I was saying was that the changes that this would make would be basically errata to the campaign book, to the original campaign book, which is basically what it did. Um, I hope that Fantasy Flight will put out a, an updated version of the campaign of the whole campaign book with these changes made so that this is just like this is the returned Forgotten Age campaign book because otherwise it's going to be a big pain to be like, oh, don't forget that Threads of Fate has an intro seven now. Uh, like, better have this with you and remember to direct your attention to it. Like, that sound. I'm not sure how that's going to be handled, but if they just update the PDF, like, that's what I use. Um, but so I am pretty pleased to share that in most, uh, having not played it yet, but I went ahead and flipped through the cards, um, most of the Explorer scenarios got a pretty big overhaul to the Explorer mechanic. Uh, there are no longer treacheries in the Explorer deck at the start of the scenario. Instead, every time you explore successfully, then you shuffle one in so that you get them at a more uh, more metered out over the course of each scenario instead of getting blasted with like four of them up front. Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you excited? I, I'm all for, I guess, like returns, changing things up. Like mm -hmm. I think, yeah, we were both kind of like, eh, they won't make any big differences. Yeah, that's a bigger change um, than I expected. I don't until I actually play with it. Like I don't know if I'll like it better, but I'm mm. I'm happy to try it. Um, Interesting. So I'm like so confident that I'll like it better that I don't see myself ever not playing Return again. The other Return boxes, I'm kind of like, okay, they're a good variant. But if I'm playing with someone who's never played the campaign before, I probably won't use the Return version and stuff. Um, I'm looking at this and seeing probably the Return. The return box, like to in my opinion, provides so many fixes and just clear improvements that it's the way to go. Um, there's a couple more. Uh, you remember Threads of Fate? Yeah, it, that's you, like the the best one. Yeah, uh, you know how there's a resupply after that where you can spend your experience on um, removing poison or trauma, and you can resupply. You, you get more supply points. What if I told yep. you that now act act uh, so. Threads of Fate normally gives you one XP for every Act 1 that you complete. Mm -hmm. What if I told you that now Act 2s and Act 3s also give you XP that you can only spend on that resupply point? But That would make them a lot better. Because yeah. 5 XP to heal 1 trauma was always a bad right. right? But if you get 5 XP that you can only spend to heal trauma, um, yeah. or the other thing you can do with them is convert them 2 to 1 to supply points and buy more supplies uh, than you used to be able to. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah, and so you can convert, I, I, from my understanding, and this is all in this additional campaign guide, um, as opposed to printed on cards for the setup of that scenario, but my understanding is that you can convert all of your XP to supply if you want, but specifically those new XP that they're giving you in Threads of Fate that's just more XP than the campaign, mm -hmm. than the scenario used to generate, can only be used for one of those two purposes, is remove poison, cure trauma, or... I feel like they reversed those verbs. I feel like it should be cure poison, remove trauma. But anyway, <laughs> you can remove poison, cure trauma, or convert them into supply points. Uh, I think that's super interesting. And just being able to spend a couple XP basically to buy the binoculars, <laughs> you know, get those XP back, prevent a trauma. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay, and now for the main event, in my opinion. Uh, I think the worst part of the Forgotten Age 
is Heart of the Elders. And the fact that you play the first part of it uh, repeatedly <laughs> until you succeed at it, whether that takes you one try or ten tries or the rest of your life, um, now, instead of replaying it, you can choose a resolution that says that you haven't completed the puzzle, but you go into the mouth anyway, and instead you get two Yig's Fury per pillar you did not finish. Oh, that's mm. clever. Yeah. Uh, that sounds fantastic to me. I love that. I've always... I've, I've, and we, this is a rehash of what we said before, but one of the things I love about Arkham is that you fail forward, right? You very rarely like lose a scenario. You definitely never, at least some people do, but the game never encourages you to try the same scenario again. It encourages you to proceed and let your story unfold the way that it now will. Um, and now that's what happens here. As I think, you know, it was an interesting experiment, but I think, I think that this, uh, I think this is better. I, I like it. Um, so that, that, that sums up the changes that at a glance I saw from the box, as you'd expect, there's also lots of new alternate bosses and alternate locations, a botanist ally for some reason. I don't know how she fits into this, but I can see she's in this pile of cards. Um, yeah. So I'd say that I am cautiously, extremely optimistic about Return to the Forgotten Age now and pretty excited to play it. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, Heart of the Elder is definitely the worst one, so mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. Uh, hopefully, they also made it more fun too. Like even on one playthrough, it right. wasn't that great. Right. Um, yeah, it was kind of the most just uh, the, the most least interesting is what I was about to say, uh, and then I guess I continued to say it. Uh, it's, it's the least interesting scenario by a pretty wide margin, I think. Plus, you put it, you then loop it on repeat. Um. Yeah, so so we'll, we'll see. Uh, hopefully on uh, Twitch.tv slash Optimal Play, whether it's on Tabletop Simulator or when we can play again in person someday. We used to stream pointing cameras at ourselves. Remember <laughs> that was <laughs> those were the days. Uh, I'm looking forward to play it, and we'll make sure to get it um, on there. Um, all right, I think I think that that does it. Uh, we have a, two weeks off until the starter decks come out and then uh then we lock ourselves in our closets for a month to talk about them <laughs> any great. any parting thoughts before we sign off uh no i'm excited to play this one i've got uh one campaign midway through circle undone right now um but yeah hopefully my next one will be uh return to forgotten age yeah i frustratingly have two forgotten age campaigns in progress right now like well over or like right around halfway through so i'm probably not going to restart them Mm, it's yeah. probably just going to be a lot of, little while before i get around to playing the return which is mildly frustrating but you know so it goes it's how yeah. how the campaign game works it locks you in yep all right well if you stuck with us thank you so much for watching uh again if you don't subscribe uh we'd love to have you and see you again in the future so um for that have a great night till the starter decks come out and we see you then be optimal <laughs>